All right. In this video, let's officially talk about the chi-square test for the independence between two categorical variables. Let's jump right into our example. In this example, we're trying to test whether the gender of beer drinkers is independent of his or her beer preference. Here, we consider two genders, male and female, and three types of beers, light beer, regular beer, or dark beer. First of all, of course, we have to take care of the uh, random sampling process. Suppose that we surveyed and got responses from 200 beer drinkers. And the survey result is summarized in the following observed frequency table. Before we talk about this observed frequency table, let's take a look at our hypothesis. First of all, the null hypothesis is of course beer preference is independent of gender. Alternative hypothesis is beer preference is not independent of gender. Now, let's take a look at the observed frequency table. Out of the 200 beer drinkers surveyed, 132 of them are male and 68 of them are female. And out of the entire group of 200, 90 of them prefer light beer, 77 of them prefer regular beer, and 33 of them prefer dark beer. Out of the 90 beer drinkers who prefer light beer, 51 of them are male and 39 of them are female. Out of 77 of them who prefer regular beer, 56 of them are male and 21 of them are female. In the end, out of the 33 of them who prefer dark beer, 25 are male and 8 are female. Next, let's look at the connection between this hypothesis test for independence and our probability theory. Suppose we define the following event. Bi indicates the preference for beer I. I can be equal to 1, 2, or 3, and 1 is for light beer, 2 is for regular beer, and 3 is for dark beer. And similarly, GJ indicates the gender of a beer drinker, where J can be equal to 1 or 2. 1 is for male, and 2 is for female. If beer preference and gender are indeed independent, the following must be true. The joint probability of BI and GJ must be equal to the product of the two corresponding marginal probability, probability of BI and the probability of GJ. Alternatively, if beer preference and gender are independent, the marginal probability of BI must be equal to the conditional probability of BI given the gender. In other words, we are testing whether P of BI is equal to the conditional probability of BI given male, and whether that is equal to the conditional probability of BI given female as well. Based on the observed frequency table we had previously, we can easily derive the observed relative frequency table. As a matter of fact, this is called joint probability table in the previous chapters. Let's take a look. Of the entire sample of 200 beer drinkers, 66% are male, 34% are female. Similarly, 45% of them prefer light beer, 38.5% of them prefer regular beer, and 16.5% of them prefer dark beer. And those six numbers give us the joint probabilities. For example, this number here, 25.5%, that is to say, the male who prefer light beer accounts for 25.5% of the entire sample. Similarly, over here, the female who prefer regular beer accounts for 
10.5% of the entire sample, and so on and so forth. Now, let's look at the expected relative frequency table, assuming that peer preference and gender are independent. Here's how we are going to derive this table. Knowing that 45% of beer drinkers prefer light beer, and 66% of the sample is male, if indeed gender and beer preference are independent, then the percentage of male who prefer light beer out of the entire sample should be 66% times 45%, which is equal to 29.7%. And similarly, if gender and beer preference are independent, there should be 15.3% of female preferring light beer, and so on and so forth. Once we come up with this expected relative frequency table, we can easily derive the expected frequency table as follows. Knowing that in our sample we have 200 beer drinkers, as a result, if gender and beer preference are independent, we should be expecting 59.4 males who prefer light beer. This number comes from 200 times 29.7%. And similarly, uh, there should be 26.18 females who prefer regular beer in our sample, assuming gender and beer preference are independent, and so on and so forth. And once again, the way we calculate the expected frequencies is exactly the way we did it in the hypothesis testing for equality of multiple population proportions. And that's why you see the identical formula over here. In our case, we took a little bit detour because we would like to understand the connection between this hypothesis test and the probability theory a little bit better. Now we are ready to do some calculation. Once again, we import chi-square functions from SciPy stats package first. And then we put the observed and expected frequencies in two lists. Next, we compute chi square test statistic, critical chi square value, and the p value. To compute chi square test statistic, in this case, I'm using list comprehension from Python. What you see over here essentially gives us the squared difference between observed and expected frequencies divided by the expected frequencies. And then we sum up all those ratios, which gives us the chi-square test statistic. And similarly, uh, let's assume alpha is 5%. In this case, degree of freedom is also 2. We are calling chi-square PPF function once again to get the critical chi-square value. In the end, we compute the p-value. Once again, this is a upper tail test. As a result, p-value is equal to 1 minus the CDF value from chi-square distribution. Given that degree of freedom is equal to 2, and the chi-square value is what we found earlier. Let's take a look at the result. The chi-square test statistic is equal to roughly 6.45, and the critical chi-square value is 5.99. And we can draw the conclusion already. We are going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that beer preference and gender are not independent. Similarly, we can compute the p-value, which turns out to be 3.98% which is less than our significance level of 5%, so we have the same conclusion. Next, let's have a quick summary for the chi-square test for independence between two categorical variables. First, we state the now and alternative hypothesis, and then we're going to select a random sample 
and collected information to record the observed frequencies. In the next step, we are going to compute the expected frequencies based on the assumption that null hypothesis is true or those two variables are independent. In step 4, we can calculate the chi-square test statistic and in the end, in step 5, we are going to draw our conclusions based on either p-value approach or the critical value approach. In the chi-square test, for independence between two categorical variables, the degree of freedom is given as follows r minus 1 times c minus 1, where r is the number of rows and c is the number of columns in the frequency table. Let's take a look why the degree of freedom is equal to r minus 1 times c minus 1. We begin with r times c degrees of freedom. But in order for us to conduct the hypothesis testing, we have to know the sums of each row in each column. As a result, we lose r plus c minus 1 degrees of freedom. But you may wonder why it is r plus c minus 1. Well, there are r rows and uh, c columns, so there must be r plus c subtotals. Here's the catch. The sum of all row subtotals must be equal to the sum of all column subtotals. So if we know r plus c minus 1 subtotals, we can easily compute the last one. As a result, we should be losing r plus c minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if you do the algebra, r times c minus r minus c plus 1 is indeed equal to r minus 1 times c minus 1. In our example, r is equal to 3 and c is equal to 2. Out of those 6 numbers, if we know 2 of those 6 numbers, we can figure out the rest of the 4 numbers because we know all the subtotals. In other words, we only have freedom to change 2 of those numbers. As a result, the degree of freedom is equal to 2 which is the product of 3 minus 1 and 2 minus 1.